In this video lecture, we're, we're going to talk about finding the operating point for a pump in a pipe system. Let's go ahead and take a look at the screen. Uh, the picture I have here is for a shallow well jet pump. Um, and the, this is, that's this image here. And then we have a, um, a centrifugal style submersible pump over here on the right hand side. What I really want to focus on actually is this one. Uh, these are the kinds of pumps that you would have in a water well that you would sink down into a well. In a previous video, I showed like a hand pump. That's, you know, that's old fashioned. You wouldn't really use that for a home out in the country. But this kind of pump is pretty typical actually for pumping water out of uh, a deeper well. And the way it's designed is there's actually, the, the pump is dropped down into the well. So this, you can see this is kind of a long cylinder and that's because it's put down into the well casing all the way down to the bottom of the well. And the reason for that is because if it's a deep well, you need to have the pump, as we know from the NPSH lecture, um, lecture, you have to have the pump down, uh, down as far as you can so you can avoid cavitation in the pump, right? So we have to put the pump at the bottom. And so the, the, this kind of pump is designed to be uh, dropped into that um, well casing. You can see the motor here that's designed to um, turn the, the pump. You have a screen for the water intake, so the water would be coming in through here. The screen just helps prevent debris from being collected. And then you see all of these, you see on the shaft, the, the shaft rotates, but you see all of these, uh, they're, they're actually a housing and an impeller and a diffuser. So the housing here um, just houses the impeller. It's a closed impeller, you can see this. And then when the water comes out of the impeller, it kind of swirls around from the outside, and then there's a little gap with the housing and it goes through this diffuser. The diffuser just helps reorient the flow so that it goes into the next impeller in the correct direction. So you can actually see these are all stacked. So it's, it's a bunch of impellers or really kind of pumps in series so that you can gradually build up pressure head. And the idea is that the, you're building up pressure. The flow is going upwards here. You're gradually building pressure through each of these impeller stages. And then there's a, a check valve to, to prevent the flow from going back downward. So it's always just either going upward or it's stationary if you're not turning the pump. And then the flow goes all the way up to the surface of the well. And then, you know, it goes into your, it gets probably filtered and then goes into your house for well water. So that's how that kind of pump works. And I thought that would be of interest to you since um, many people probably have a pump like this if they live in the country and use well water. Okay, so uh, what we're going to talk about today is finding the operating point for a pump in a pipe system. And uh, it's a pretty straightforward topic. What we'll do is we'll focus on the pump performance curves, this kind of head rise as a function of flow rate. We've been dealing with these. Uh, you're very familiar with the pump curve here. That's this black line, kind of this uh, kind of upside down sort of quadratic looking equation, you know. And, um, and then we have the system curve, which is this dashed line here. The system curve is a property of the system. The pump curve, of course, is a property of the pump. So the pump curve you get from the manufacturer for how that um, pump operates. The system curves cu curve comes from the extended Bernoulli equation. So for example, let's say we had a pipe system that looked like this. Uh, we've got a free surface here. Let's call this point one. And then we go through some pipe bends, let's say there's a pump here. And then we eventually pump into another reservoir that's taller, point two here, that's also at a free surface. And uh, so we would ex apply the extended Bernoulli equation from point one to point two. Let me just quickly sketch that out. By the way, you've probably seen me write this dot, dot, dot given right here. That that's just means it's the same thing as this, just at point one. And I can go ahead and rearrange this equation to solve for HS. Okay, so this would be, um, let's see, it'd be P2 minus P1 plus alpha 2 V bar 2 squared minus alpha 1 v bar 1 squared plus z2 minus z1 plus hl 
one, two. Okay, so what I've done is this equation has just been, all I've done is rewrite the extended Bernoulli equation here to write it in terms of the shaft head term. That is what we call our system curve. That's this curve right here. Okay, this is the head rise we need from our system to operate at the given flow rate, the, the given velocities here. The flow rate actually would show up in the head loss term. Remember the head loss term looks like the loss coefficients times the velocity head squared where that loss occurs. So you can see that the shaft head that we need from our pump for this system it will be equal to this where it's you can see it's a function of the flow rate through the pipe system that's the, the flow rate shows up in that velocity term that's the velocity where the losses occur it's in the pipe system so this is where the flow rate shows up the velocities on the surfaces of one and two are nominally zero because it's those are big tanks so these velocities wouldn't really show up in this particular example but you can see here that the shaft head term that we need from our pump goes um, as the flow rate squared. You can see it's a plus velocity squared. It's like a plus flow rate squared. And so that's why the system curve tends to go upward, kind of like a quadratic curve as well, like a, a parabola, because it's shaft head, some constant, plus a flow rate, you know, constant times a flow rate squared. So that's this one. So the pump curve heads downward, the system curve heads upward. The pump, this is the head rise provided by the pump at that given flow rate. So this is what the pump can provide. The dashed line is what our system needs from our pump to operate at the given flow rate. So where they intersect is where we'll operate. That'll be our, our operating flow rate for our pump pipe system. So that's how it works. That's how you find the operating point. It's just where the pump curve and the system curve um, intersect. And again, the pump curve comes from the manufacturer. It's a pump property. The system curve comes from an, an extended Bernoulli equation analysis where you're just solving for what you need from your pump as a function of flow rate. Okay, And where they intersect is the operating point. Um, now, over time, your system curve will actually change because of fouling. So uh, you can imagine that over time, your your pipes might get um, some debris, kind of crud building up on the walls. Uh, so, you know, it, it doesn't, you don't get as much, um, it, it's harder to pump fluid through the pipes because of the buildup of material on the walls and things like that. And so what you'll find is over time, your system curve will start to increase here. You'll, for a given flow rate, you'll need more head rise than what you needed originally, right? So this is the head rise um, over time. And this would be the head rise original for that given flow rate because you're just getting the buildup of stuff inside your walls. It's, you know, it's just fouling and things like that, right? So hopefully that makes sense that your system curve will change over time. Similarly, your pump curve will change over time as well. You'll see that the pump curves typically will drop down. So at a given flow rate, again, you'll get less of a head rise over time than what you originally had. And that's because you get wear in your pump. You know, the, the clearances start to get a little bit bigger. Um, the, the pump becomes less effective because of um, vibration and, and tip clearances and things like that. So, and again, there might be some buildup of debris and stuff that form in your pump over a long period of time. So your pump curve also changes over time due to wear. So you would expect then over time, your operating point may actually change because your point of intersection, as you see up here, might change because the system curve changes as well as the pump curve can change. So, you know, if you're going to operate your pump for a long period of time, you kind of have to allow for a little bit of allowance for your operating point to change because of this kind of um, wear and fouling and things that, that can occur. Now there's some other issues that you need to be aware of for operating um, pumps and pipe systems, and that is when you start to get these kind of um, pump curves that look like this. So this is kind of a, a pump curve that, you notice when I've drawn these pump curves, there's a little bit of curvature here. Um, many pumps kind of display that little falling part, um, this part with that kind of a falling slope there. If that's more extreme, as you can see in this picture, 
then you kind of run into problems of stability for your pump. So let's say this is our system curve, the dashed line, and this is our pump curve. Well, here there are two operating points, right? There's an intersection here, and there's an intersection here. So does that mean you operate at both? Well, no, not necessarily. Um, this is a stable operating point, and this is an unstable one. The way you determine this, this is, this is the way you find out um, the stability of a lot of different things, not just fluid mechanics, but in a lot of different cases. Is what you do is you, you look at just a small perturbation from the stable point. So imagine I'm over on this side. Okay, let's say I perturb the system from our stable point over to this side. So here you can see that what will happen is my pump will provide less head rise than what I need for my, for my system, right? In order to operate at this flow rate over here, I need this much head rise from my pump. You know, my system needs that much head rise to operate at that flow rate, but my pump doesn't provide that much head rise. So what'll happen is the, the system, the flow rate will slow down. And so I'll end up drifting back toward the, the operating point. Similarly, if I'm over on this side, here, my system only needs that much head, but my pump is providing more head than I need, so I'll get a higher flow rate, and then that'll push it back toward that stable operating point. So that's, that you can kind of show via that argument that that's a stable operating point. Over here, however, at the unstable operating point, the opposite occurs. If I'm over on this side of things, then my pump is providing more head rise than what I actually need for my system, and so the flow will start to speed up, and I'll move away from that operating point. And similarly, if I'm over here, my pump provides less head rise than what I need, and so I'll slow down, and so I'll, I'll end up moving that direction. So it's an unstable operating point there. Typically, we would prefer to avoid these kind of multiple operating point scenarios. It's, it's much better to have a situation like this where it, there's a clear single operating point, and for stability purposes, you want the intersection, you want it to be as steep as possible. You'd, you'd like your pump curve to go like that and your system curve to be like this, because then it's, then it's very stable. Because if you push to one side, you'll see there's a big um, difference between what your system needs and what your pump can provide, and it'll quickly push you back to that operating point. The opposite, the opposite of that is shown here. So in this kind of... Um, um, I mean, it's, it's actually this one down here. In this kind of a system where you have a very flat pump curve and a flat system curve, there is one stable operating point right there, but the problem is, is the driving potential, um, if it's perturbed from the operating point, is pretty small, and so it'll take a long time to get back to that operating point. Like here, you're still, you're pretty close to having the, the pump provide the the head rise you need for the system, it's pretty close, so it's not really pushing the flow rate back to that stable point right away. It, it takes time. So this still is a point of stability, but it, it's not, um, it, it takes time to get back to that point. And we generally don't like that as, an engi as engineers. We want, again, we want to know what's happening. We don't want this uncertainty or kind of drifting around kind of behavior. Here's another example of a kind of a strange pump curve. Occasionally you'll see something like this, where now we have three operating points, two of which are stable. So this, the ones that I'm circling in red, that's a stable point, and this is a stable point. The one in blue here is unstable. So we know we won't operate at that, that unstable one, but we could operate at two stable points in this sort of scenario. Uh, which, which one we operate in, it depends on uh, just kind of where I'm starting off from. If I'm if I'm starting off from over here, then I'm very likely operate it at that operating point. If I start off over on this side, then I would likely operate at that operating point. Again, as engineers, we don't like this kind of situation because we want to know exactly what our operating conditions will be. We don't want it to potentially be a choice between two different conditions where we we could transition from one to the other if you know if there's enough vibration in the system or something like that. We we do we want to avoid that. We don't want that. So uh, these kind of situations where you have this kind of behavior um, that I show here, it's not super common. It does occasionally appear, but we want to avoid it. This again is not 
terribly common, but it's just something you should be aware of that we try to avoid that sort of thing. It's much more typical to have a situation like what I show up here. That's desirable to have a single, well-defined, very stable operating point. All right, uh, I think that's all I need to say about this topic. Hopefully you understand the, the idea here is that this is the head rise that the pump can provide. This is the head rise that we need to operate at a given flow rate. And we find that um, and that's our system uh, curve and that's found by using the extended Bernoulli equation. And just where they intersect is gonna be when the pump provides just the amount of head rise that we need for our system. So it's the intersection of the two. All right, we'll end it there.